Come on, then. Just don't let the tape so you watch it. Okay. Yeah. From now? Yep. Okay, so I'm George Hinchliffe uh, of the Ukulele Orchestra of Great Britain. How did it all start? Oh, it started off as a bit of fun. The idea was that uh, it was going to be a one-off gig just as a, a lark. And in fact, we put an advert in a, a listings magazine and a lot of people came along and seemed to enjoy it. So we thought, let's keep going. What was the appeal of the instrument? For us to play or, or what anything? The, what, why, why are 450 people coming here this evening? <clears throat> um, sometimes when we are uh, asked by people about that sort of thing, the uh, assumption is that it's something to do with the instrument as though playing the ukulele is going to guarantee a full house and I think there is uh, uh, quite a, um, a subculture of ukulele players wherever you go these days quite a lot in England but elsewhere uh, I don't know Germany Sweden <coughs> America blah 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 all over the place uh, but my guess is that uh, our show is probably something to do with it and uh, although we play ukuleles and nothing but I suspect that uh, our show would work even if we were playing uh, ocarinas or uh, portative organs or something. Now, you recently toured Japan two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. You went down a storm, I understand. Yeah, we've done, we did two tours of Japan virtually ten years apart, so it was quite interesting seeing what the differences were. Um, you were quoted as to outsell Madonna. Could you maybe just relay that story? Sure. <laughs> well, <coughs> someone told us that that was the, the case. Who knows? I can't imagine that uh, Madonna was uh, struggling to find an audience in Japan. But then we weren't either. Um, <coughs> but certainly, uh, right at the beginning, we uh, issued our first album on a small UK label. And then we got a call from CBS in Japan saying, uh, could we let them have the album? So, of course, that put us in the position of a record production company or a, a, um, a record company, indeed, uh, licensing to another label. So usually what happens is that the large label licenses to the small label. In this case, a tin pot little band was licensing to, licensing to CBS. And then CBS got bought up by Sony. And um, I think there was quite a bit of interest at the time. So, in fact, what happened was we sold uh, I understand in excess of 20,000 copies of each of our first four albums in Japan alone. And our UK lawyer, music business lawyer, said, oh, crikey, if only you'd been selling that amount in England uh, in the proper chart reporting shops, you'd be in the uh, top of the pops or whatever the appropriate thing would have been. Of course, we weren't doing that, so uh, we were sinking without trace. What, um, when, when people say ukulele, it always brings a smile to their face, really, doesn't it? Well, I think it is a light-hearted sort of instrument, and uh, uh, it's kind of got the um, um, flavour of a, a joke or a toy instrument some of the time. Um, certainly, I think, because it's portable and uh, uh, it's got the Hawaiian origin or association, one thinks it's going to be there for the picnic and a bit of fun, and uh, you might go surfing or sleeping or canoodling or drinking beer in between songs. How easy is it to play or pick up? Uh, it's probably a bit easier than a lot of other instruments. There are fewer strings. I don't know that it's particularly harder than the mandolin, say. Uh, but uh, it doesn't sound too bad if you're making mistakes on it at first, whereas a violin often does. So I think the basics are quite easy to get to grips with. But uh, then I suppose it's like anything else. If you're going to start playing interesting stuff um, or more demanding stuff, then you have to put the time in practicing. Finally, your, your repertoire goes from Prince to Prokofiev, I understand. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. What's your favourite? What do you enjoy playing the most? Oh, crikey. Uh, well, in fact, I suppose the one of the reasons that the repertoire goes all over the place um, is because of our view of what music is. I suppose now everybody's doing that. People who go to music college come out being able to play jazz and uh, classical and uh, um, doing remixes and scratching and all sorts of stuff. Well, everything counts as music and uh, nothing is illegitimate, if you like. But uh, when we started 22 years ago, it didn't seem quite like that. And uh, it, I think it, it was a bit more puzzling for 
some people what we were doing then. But certainly for us, uh, music is the stuff that pop songs or classical music are made of, uh, and the, all the um, what, what seem to be genres and styles are in actual fact more like uh, fashions. So it depends what sort of haircut you've got or what kind of shirt you're wearing. Uh, the music is the same stuff underneath, whether it's, I don't know, uh, hot chip or 50 cent or Beethoven, you know.